Assalamu alaikum, welcome to today's podcast as we'll be diving into the world of professional bodybuilding with one of the youngest to ever receive uh, an IVB Pro card at the age of 21, making huge wins afterwards, including the 2016 Tampa Pro, 2018 Toronto Pro, and the 2021-22 Arnold Classic. Mm -hmm. And also, he competed at the prestigious Olympia stage five times, taking second to the current uh, champion, Chris Pumstead. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bodybuilding sensation, Terence Ruffin, hey. also known as Ruff Diesel. <laughs> hey, how are you doing how are today? You? All good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. A little, a little sick, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm making it. You know. Really? Is it flu? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> hope it's not COVID. Yeah. 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 How long well, have you been in, in Dubai currently? Um, I think about. I got here on a Monday. Today, is, I don't even know what today is. But, uh, <laughs> I think it's Friday. Today's yeah. Friday, so days. I think um, a week and a half. I think. Mm. Yeah. Maybe. 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 Maybe the change of uh, weather have have affected you somehow. I think it's just uh, I've been working and a lot, I need to get a little bit more sleep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Resting. Yeah, running a business and everything. Is a, you know, nice. especially uh, when most of the, the employees are in the U.S. is a mm. little tough. Ah, so you have to adjust the timing. You're working here and so there's like 14 dif hours different. Uh, it's an eight hour difference from eight hours. Uh, the East Coast and a mm. 11 hour difference on the West Coast. Oh, so you have to adjust mm. to that. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. How are you enjoying Dubai so far? It's good. I mean, all I've done is I've, I've come here to B News and then I uh, go to the mall. I'm staying mm. at the uh, when the hotel's attached. So, yeah, yeah, it's not a whole <laughs> that's lot. That's perfect. You didn't have to move not a lot. Not a whole lot, but yeah. Uh, that's perfect. All right. So tell us a little bit about yourself, about your background. How did you get into bodybuilding in the first place? Okay. Um, I'm from a small town in Alabama. Mm. Um, right now, the population is dropping, so it's maybe... 200 people left every 10 years they lose like 100 people so in 20 <laughs> years it'll be nobody there probably but um you know i started out living there i uh, graduated school early and um my mom wanted me to get out of the house and, and mm. do something i didn't want to go to college because i was burnt out from education and so i joined the military mm -hmm. and um, i spent six years serving in the air force and um, while serving, I was able to find bodybuilding as well. So mm. I did my first two Olympia, you know, I got my pro card and did my first two Olympia pros while uh, in the Air Force. Ah, mm. So, so uh, you got the IFBB uh, pro card while being employed in the Army, in the military? In the Air Force, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, when did you decide to uh, leave the, uh, the Army and dedicate to life? So when you, you sign up, you do contracts either four to six years. And at the end of my, um, I did six. I basically thought I could make a living from competing. Um, mm, cool. It was tough for the first two years, mm. you know, trying to build up my name and build up a business. But, um, you know, on that on that third year, things started to go very, very uh, well. Mm. In like 2019, 2020. Mm -hmm. Nice, 2020. What inspired you to go into professional bodybuilding per se? How did you know that you can qualify to compete at that uh, level? I was raised to believe you can do anything you put your mind to, you know. Mm. Uh, so I've never had a thought where I couldn't I couldn't do something, you know. Um, it's just a matter of how long. I didn't. Personally, I thought it would take a lot longer, you mm. know. Um, when I started in bodybuilding, uh, you know, there were there were guys like Phil Heath and Kai Green, Dexter mm. Jackson at the top, and they were in their their mid thirties, you know. So I was thinking, oh, it'd be another. 10, 10, 10 years, years until you yeah, qualify. Yeah. And little did I know it'll be, you know, two, three years, mm. you know. Yeah. Nice. I think you've been blessed with, with genetics. Do you believe that's, that's a true statement when they say genetics play uh, a, bit, a really big role? You've mentioned that mindsets have, mm -hmm. have played an important uh, role. Do you think genetics also plays uh, something? I think, yeah, I think genetics are pretty much, <laughs> pretty much <laughs> everything. I mean, like... No matter how hard I try, I don't. I wouldn't be a good strong man. Mm. Like Brian Shaw, is two feet taller and you know two hundred pounds <laughs> yeah. heavier. I can't. You know, um, I think it's a mixture of yeah genetics, but at the same time, if mm. timing is a is a is a big thing as well. Um, if I would have gotten the sport five years earlier, you know, cl before classic was mm. around, I still would have been you know sitting yeah. around. Um, you got guys. 
from the 90s who would probably would smoke all the guys from today, but they competed with Ronnie, mm -hmm. and, you know, instead of competing with the guys It's today, a whole different so. era of, of mass. Yeah, so a lot of things are like a mixture of genetics and just timing, I think, mm -hmm. you know. Why classic? You, you start with the classic physique, or have you tried something else before? I, tur I started before classic was mm -hmm. a thing. I turned pro in bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. um, two years before classic was even mm -hmm. a, a division in the sport. So, um, yeah, yeah. Man, as if classic physique were made for, for, for bodies, such as the, the, the magnificent body you have. Okay. You, you know, that, that waist, uh, those, uh, you know, it's like there was a need for classic mm -hmm. division to, to start. And it was a marvelous uh, decision to start that uh, division. Yeah. And guys like you, you were made for this division. Yeah. No, it's cool. It's cool to see, um, especially with the way like, um, there's a whole industry is going mm. like they, people are liking small, at least in the in the States, the kids are liking smaller yeah. and smaller physiques. <laughs> They're not interested in mm. bodybuilders as much. Mm. And it's a little sad, you know, um, you, I see all these guys who put their lives into the sport, um, not get that same recognition, you know, guys mm. like Phil and Ronnie did back in the day. But, um, you know, things change and it's probably gonna go all the way, you know, 360 again, like in another <laughs> 10 years, bodybuilding's gonna be like yeah. way, way at the top again, yeah. It's been like that with everything, you know, everything returns back to the, to the old yeah. classics. It's always like, I said, it's just a rotation, as you mentioned. <laughs> exactly. Now it's like we're going back to the 80s again. The exactly, same, yep, you know? the, um, the loose pants, the hippie shirts, you yeah, know, yeah. yeah, all of it, yeah. And I believe, yeah. in, in, I think, at least in my personal opinion, I think everybody agrees that the, it, it's more pleasing to the eyes. The, mm. For most, of course, we do understand the mass and the muscle, and we do appreciate that. But like yeah. the huge po a part of the population, they would like to see something uh, aesthetic. For and sure. I think the, the classic physique provides that. And even for some people, I mean, <laughs> class physique is a bit much, you know? I, I obviously, <laughs> like... Us in the bodybuilding world that's been in it forever, mm. you know, that's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, a very good balance between, mm. you know, muscle and, and shape. But like a lot of just the normal people that you see in the gym, a lot of the people that that pay for the sport, mm. you know what I mean? That come to shows, come to events, they, they that's still extreme for them. You know, mm. it's pretty crazy to, mm. to think that. When I was in the military, I had coworkers who would say bikini girls are too muscular, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it's a crazy world we live in. Yeah. Okay. Can you describe the uh, uh, ideal uh, training routine? I think honestly, I think um, I spent the first few years of, of my career like trying to do everything the pros are doing. Mm. Yeah, I would pick up like the magazines, like Muscle Development or Flex Magazine, and they would have the workouts, mm. the workouts from the pros. <laughs> Who knows if it was their real workouts or not? But um, I think ultimately. The best, the best bodybuilders, the best anybody, they're able to, you know, build something based on their own physique. So true. You you test out things, you try things, you say, oh, this exercise feels good. This doesn't hurt my joints. I, you know, I feel this very well. Um, you keep doing stuff like that, and then on top of that, just paying attention to how your body feels. Like, mm. if are you recovering from your workouts? Do you feel ready to go to the gym the next time? I think those are the two biggest factors is like, does it feel good and are you recovering from your workouts? Mm -hmm. I think recovery is a huge part. I think recovery mm -hmm. uh, uh, is a huge part of the sport maintaining. Uh, the recovery part of it, I think, plays a huge role in, in building muscles, continuing to training. If you don't recover properly, you don't train. Yeah. Do you have any specific protocols and uh, recovery, especially during prep season? I mean, the biggest thing is just eating enough, and uh, doing the appropriate amount of volume in your workouts. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first started out, I didn't have money to pay for like massage therapists or, mm -hmm. or all these other things that people do now. Um, I just did the basics. I ate, I slept, I stretched, <laughs> and that was good for like a lot of a lot of years of my career. Mm -hmm. You know, as you get older, you need a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, now more I more maintenance. I, yeah, yeah, you need more maintenance. You know, you got guys like LeBron who spend like a million dollars a year on just. Just recovery and things mm -hmm. like that. So um, now I, you know, I try to see a massage therapist once a week. Um, mm -hmm. I try to make sure I'm moving more and I'm, I'm stretching because mm -hmm. a lot of times I just end up sitting on the couch or sitting at my desk working, you know, all day. And um, those are the two biggest things, you know. You know, it's crazy when you see people that are like old, old, like um, 70s, 80s, the mm -hmm. ones that are in the best health. 
they're the ones that just move the most. So as long as you're getting that movement. movement. Yeah. yeah, as long yeah. As, as you know, I always believe you don't age, you just stop moving. Yep. Once you stop moving, you start uh, aging. A hundred percent. Yo, my grandmother, I saw it really, really clearly with her, where she was in very good health. And then as soon as she retired, she sat around the house. Uh -huh. And in a year, she was just like, it was like a whole different woman, you know? Oh, yeah. 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 It's movement, I think. All right. So as as the competition starts to get fiercer, as you uh, advance in the uh, in the in the level of bodybuilding, I think you start investing more into recovering recovering techniques. Have you tried ice baths, for example, or the sauna, cold water stuff, or you haven't tried any of these? Um, I've done ice like cold therapies before. You know, it's funny. I see uh, Chris. He, he there's like a thousand videos of him online doing cold therapies, but there's tons of research saying that it actually um, slows down like um, yeah. muscle building. Yeah, so. it, it, does, it does the opposite. Yeah, yeah you have to like yeah. strategically place it because I think it, uh, during training we induce the inflammation. Mm -hmm. So for us, yeah, and for bodybuilders, inflammation is something good. It induces the growth. Sure. I mean, there's like there's like um, there's good and bad and everything, and, mm -hmm. and you can do too much of something really easy. You know, yeah. like people want to. Uh, I always speak negatively on inflammation, but like you said, it's, it's useful. But too much is bad, but too little is bad as well. You know, it's everything's like using about the right balance. tool yeah. for the right job. Exactly. How exactly. does your nutrition change uh, between off-season and contest prep? Does it change a lot? or <laughs> I just, just eat, I eat a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> during uh, off-season, yeah? Yeah, during off-season, <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, the more, I, at least this is what happens with me. I don't know the case with anyone else, but... The more muscle I put on, the more food I've been able to eat during mm. contest prep. You know, obviously to maintain more mm. muscle, you need a little bit more, you know. Higher uh, metabolism, I think. For sure. Helps. So um, that's the one thing I've noticed mm. is like, I remember my first few shows back uh, as a pro in 2016, I got down to like zero carbs, mm. two hours of cardio. Ouch. Nowadays, it's just 30 minutes a day. Um, I still get carbs in like three of my meals mm. normally. You know, I believe you start to understand your body more. so the yeah, the, the preparation gets easier by time. It's a mix. So, like, I, personally, I mean, like, I was pretty pretty strict, and I've had good mm -hmm. coaches forever. John Meadows is one of the smartest people yeah. to ever be in bodybuilder. So I don't, don't want to say, like, beast. anything like that. Like, um, it's more so me handling the off-season better. Because mm -hmm. when, uh, when I first started, I used off-season as an excuse to eat whatever <laughs> I wanted, whenever I wanted. You know, I still ate a lot, but I probably ate too much. Mm. And then that made the prep really, really hard to mm. lose all that body fat, you know. My first off-season, I, I did my first show, I was 145 pounds. Mm. I went in the off-season and got up to 200. And then my next show, I was 155 pounds. Mm. I didn't need to put on 40 pounds of fat, you know. Mm. Um, Just you know? a slight increase in the amount of, of, uh, of calories and that's it. Yeah, yeah. So I... Um, just better better managing my off season not putting mm. on a whole bunch of unnecessary fat so it, yeah i think you believe i believe you keep also track of your food or just yeah you you keep also the the calorie counting the yeah i keep track of my food still yeah a little um, loser i'm a little um and i'm a little bit more cautious of eating out all the time mm. like and eating eating better foods like my, like my whole time that first off season was just to get bigger i mm. looked at the scale i didn't care about the mirror and i would eat anything to a buck is a buck on huh? what, yeah. just want to buck yep yep <laughs> and i'll eat anything i had i remember rich piano was really popular yeah every, he was like oh eat ben and jerry's eat your at food. night eat big to get big so, so i would eat the ice cream every night before bed mm. and like <laughs> yeah it was not not the best i was i was eating more then than i'd eat now you know mm. i was eating like 12 ounces of chicken um, three cups of rice with like half my meals. It was it was a lot. It was a lot of food. Let's talk about your uh, competition, competitive experience. Okay. Walk us through your mind uh, from the start of the preparation to a competition until you get on the stage. How do you how do you approach it? How, approach competitions in general. I'm very relaxed. You know, um, I'm very uh, stoic. You know, I focus on the things I can control, and I don't worry about. Um, anything outside of that so like I focus on what can I do better today and you know training mm. food cardio and and that's it I don't think about who I'm gonna be on stage with or how they're gonna look because it, at the end of the day it doesn't really matter because 
I can't control what mm. they're going to do, you know, and there's no sense in me worrying about what they're doing. It's you against you. I just want to be a better you. You know, it's funny. Yeah, when you first start, you think it's just silly that people say that, but it honestly is. It's not like, it's not like boxing or football, mm. soccer, any of that. Because, you know, in, in boxing, you have to pay attention to the other guy. You have to know his moves. You have to know, you know, how he fights, his reach. In bodybuilding, it, <laughs> you, like, knowing, knowing how tall Chris or Ramon is doesn't help me it doesn't matter. at all, you know? Yeah. I just do me. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's, it's, a, it's a short shortcoming of the, the sport itself that it doesn't have, like, uh, an, a, an, an objective way of determine, determining the winner? It's a sub subjective sport. Uh, it's a subjective sport after all. Yeah. So do you think uh, that's something that affects the sport? or? Yeah, I mean, I think it does. I mean, like, especially, like, it, it can be social. It's, it's basically art. It's like mm. if you went to, like, a, an art show and you're trying to figure out which one's the best painting, like... You're going to have people to disagree and it's going to make it hard for some people to get into it mm. because some people just don't have the eye to see, mm. you know, which one is better and they get frustrated, you know. Art is art. So I, I do think it, it, it kind of limits it, but at the same time, it also makes it interesting, you know, because mm. then you can have these debates between, you know, uh, your friends and whoever and say, oh, I thought this guy was better. He's like, nah, that guy's cow suck. I think this guy's better, you know. It, it makes it fun too. It's an objective opinion. Yeah, yeah. You have an interest in art, Raf, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. What I, do you do? You, you sketch, you draw? Um, yeah, I was gonna, you know, I applied for art school. I, I, nice. um, I sold paintings when I was a teenager. Um, yeah, I've done that. I've done a lot of different stuff. Um, obviously, posing is kind of how I do it now. I do photography. This is my next question. Yeah. I, think you, I think you're one of the most brilliant poses oh, in our time. You, yeah, you. you are. Do you think art has something to do with that? I think it does. You know what is interesting? Like some people are good at, uh, I've noticed it's, it's very specialized because I see some dancers that aren't really mm -hmm. good at posing, they don't understand it. I see some photographers that don't understand posing. I think posing is its own art form mm -hmm. and like you have to understand that um, within itself. You can't be good at like this type of art or that type of art and then automatically think you're going to be a good poser too because it's not always the case. How do you craft your poses? How do you create your posing routine? Is there a specific uh, a strategy to you go through it, creating your, the posing routine? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, um, what always comes first is the is the song. So, mm -hmm. Like, if I don't feel the song, then I it's not gonna be a great routine, you know. And I think um, people can feel the emotion of like the person on stage. So like, if you don't feel it. The crowd's not gonna feel it, and it doesn't just ha it doesn't have the same impact. Yeah, you know? so man, the first it chose, thing man. Man, it is chose. the song. Mm. The next thing is once you have the song, like if you listen to, if you watch any of my routines, a lot of them, watch uh, all of them, <laughs> a lot of them <laughs> will um, match the energy in the song, mm. match the words in the song. Yes. So it's a legit choreography. You know, you you choreograph the routine to to the words in the song. So like. If it's saying something like, um, I'm looking towards the sky or the sun, then you want to do something where you're maybe pointing up or looking up or doing something like that. So, um, and sometimes I notice people don't notice mm -hmm. like you're doing that, but they, they still appreciate it. Like they can't mm -hmm. see what you're doing, but they know something they special. Feel it. Yeah, they I feel it. Yeah, they yeah. feel it. Yeah. It's so those are the, the two big things um, when I start to Who's make a song. Who's your inspiration in uh, posing? I have a lot. When I first started, I watched as many people as I could that mm. were, were good. I think um, finding people who are where you want to be at is, is important. Like, that's the first step is finding the people where you want to be and learn from them. So, like, Lila Brada, Mohamed Makawi, uh, Samir Banut, yeah, uh, Kai Green, well. these guys. Um, I studied all of those guys for years, and I... Um, learned their poses. I learned, you know, how they got in, how they did certain things. But I think the next step is, is once you start to, once you've learned everything you can from these mentors, you kind of have to go out and create something on your own, you know, or else you'll always just be a copy of somebody else. You yeah. Know? You, so you learn from the best and then you formulate your own uh, pose or your own taste. Your own, your own taste, flavor. your own style. Yeah. Yeah. What advice do you have for classic uh, physique division uh, athletes uh, regarding posing since it's something that uh, I believe you've mastered or something that you're good at 
Do you have any advices for the uh, beginners, for example? How to start, from where to start? I think the easiest place to start is to learn your mandatories. People don't want to learn the mandatories anymore. And they don't want to learn the mandatories from body, like bodybuilding. Like, mm. They'll skip like lat spreads, they'll skip most musculars, and I'm like, those are still important. I think understanding your roots is important. Like, mm. People want to separate classic physique from bodybuilding, but Arnold, Frank Zane, mm. Lee Labrada, um, Francis Benfado are all bodybuilders. Mm. Every pose that a class physique person does, it's, a bodybuilder it's created. from bodybuilding in yeah, the first place. Exactly. And I, I, one thing I really hate is um, I don't do posing coaching anymore, but I would used to have these bodybuilders come up to me and say, oh, I pose like a bodybuilder. And I think that's the biggest insult to those guys. <laughs> I was like... Look, even even today, you got Kai Green, you got Cedric McMillan. Yes, yes, Cedric definitely. McMillan was a fantastic poser, yeah. and he's a bodybuilder. So I hate when people use excuses. Mm -hmm. Like, just say I'm not good at body, I'm not good at posing. You're I not don't doing put, the work. You're not yeah, practicing. I'm not do, I'm yeah, not practicing. Not don't don't blame it on bodybuilding because there's great bodybuilders that can pose. Look at um, Andrew. You know, he mm -hmm. he goes to this gym, Andrew Jack, and man is marvelous. Um, his, yeah, and his he's huge he as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So those two things I, I really don't like is the, like because I'm because I started in bodybuilding. Everyone I, I uh, looked up to were bodybuilders, so I definitely take offense to people disrespecting bodybuilders. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's like it's lack of, of uh, practice. Even even the uh, the infamous bubble gut issue that Arnold it's lack commented of practice. on. It's lack of practice. Exactly. I mean, look nowadays. You got. I remember the biggest case was Roly Winkler. I remember mm. Arnold specifically called out Roly Winkler in one of the uh, Arnold Classics, mm. and the next year he could hit a vacuum. And he had, um, he you know, rest in peace. Um, he was a he was a Middle Eastern 212 bodybuilder. Um, Bayalto, um, ba um, I can't think of his name right now, but he was like a top five 212er. He could hit a vacuum. Um, Hadi Chupan could hit Hadi a vacuum. Chupan did it, yeah. Even Big Ramy uh, have like some half of a he vacuum. He can keep it tight. Yeah, he can keep um, it tight at least. Uh, Derek Lunsford can hit a vacuum. I think uh, the, even in, in the open bodybuilding, they started to move on more into the aesthetic part of the uh, posing. I do think I mm. do think that has to do with classic, and that's one yeah. positive thing that like classic has been able to do with Man, bodybuilders. Is magnificent. Is they they put a lot more into like their presentation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's really nice to see. Yeah, classic is amazing. Mm. Let's go into the uh, rapid fire section. I'm going to ask you quick questions <laughs> right. just to light the things up. And you're going to answer okay. not just personal opinions. Right? Oh, man. All morning right. or evening training? Which one do you prefer? I like morning. Yeah. Fasted or just one meal? Not fasted, but like after one or two meals, mm. the gym's not super crowded. Yeah, yeah, that's um, true. Man. And then you like, you have, for me, I have the most energy in the morning. Like, you know, um, in the evening, it's a little different. Mm. Training splits. Which one is your favorite? Right now, I'm kind of doing like a bro split. I'm doing uh, shoulders, back, chest, mm. then I'll rest, and then I'll do arms and legs. Mm. The, the, you like off-season or the contest prep? <laughs> I like, You're a foodie, man. You're I like <laughs> both. I like, I like um, the middle of each. I like um, right after a contest when you get to eat and you look <laughs> yeah. big and you're still shredded. You know what I mean? Actually, yeah, I like... Like eight weeks out to four weeks mm. out, and then like all like four weeks post competition <laughs> where you look your best. Immediately jump to that. Yeah. All yeah, right. Let's yeah. take us to the next question. Which one is the which which uh, favorite meal post prep? Post workout. Post prep. Post, uh, post prep. Post competition. Sorry. I mean, honestly, that's kind of changed over the years. I used to do like pizza and burgers, but then I would always feel like crap afterwards, and so <laughs> I usually wait like like two weeks to eat the burgers and stuff like that. Normally after a show now, I'll have like sushi, fruit, mm. Brazilian steakhouse. Flavors, just look for yeah, flavors. Yeah, yeah, I just, honestly, anything that I don't have to cook, mm. I love it, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, y y your diet is very simple, and I like it, that, that the simplicity of the diet itself. There's no, mm. no sophistication, nothing just straightforward. You it know, is but, very uh, simple. Like I see some of these, some right, of these cream uh, fries, chicken breasts, uh, rice, potatoes. It works. It works. It works, yeah, man. It works. Yeah, it works. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite muscle group? Right now, I'm liking calves. I always, I always have in my mindset to like the thing I want to build the most. I like training the most. You know, mm. um, because I love what body. I think bodybuilding is about improving, and so mm. like. When there's any way I can improve something, I, I enjoy being able to do that. You Perfect. Know? Last question. 
weaknesses and strength in physique? And in, in my physique, um, I think the, the, the strengths are definitely like my quads, my posing. Mm. Um, posing wise, it would be like my front double and my, my back double and the side mm. tricep. Weaknesses. I always want to bring up my calves. I don't have the best genetics. <laughs> man, that's, for, that's but, like a universal weakness, man. I know, right? I say, I, <laughs> well, shoot, like uh, you see, like Flex Lewis, he lives in Florida. Mm. Well, he used to live in Florida, mm. and his calves go down to his ankles. You know, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, marvelous. Um, I, I want to bring up my my uh, my hamstrings a little bit more mm. and my and my triceps, but I'm pretty happy with how my physique looks. You know. Um, when I first got into bodybuilding, I was like, I think I'll have my best physique at 180 because I based it off of like those guys, my height. Mm. And I'm, I was pretty spot on. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm like 178 on stage now. I'll be happy with like another two to five pounds, mm. you know? Yeah. yeah. You took an Air Force training test. Mm -hmm. It mentioned in the, in the research that uh, you failed one Air Force training test and then you went into bodybuilding. Does it have an effect uh, that you tried to improve yourself into bodybuilding after that test? Or yeah, I was I was trying to go into special forces um, mm. in the Air Force, and um, yeah, I ended up not making it through that. So they put me in a normal uh, job in the Air Force. But uh, when I first got into lifting, it was so I can come back and try again the following mm. year because uh, I was like a hundred and. 25 pounds mm. so i was like okay i need to, to gain some weight yeah mm. what is 125 like 50 55 kilos or something like that yeah around that something around, like that, around yeah. that. It's, uh, you know, it's 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 always impossible to calculate it accurately without siri <laughs> yeah i need a calculator yeah. yeah what's your proudest moments my proudest moments have been like um uh, i really like the arnold classics mm. there's a lot of like sadness around the Arnolds but because of that I take a lot more um, pride in those where um, in 2018 I had I got ninth place at the Olympia mm -hmm. I went from sixth place to ninth place and then me and my coach Matt Porter at the time was like okay we'll take a year off we'll come back and do the Arnold um, during that off season, getting ready for the Arnold he passed away I started working with John we got through one Arnold, mm -hmm. we played second that first time. So mm -hmm. close to what I wanted, but not quite where I wanted to be. The kind of like, um, I don't know what the word is, but kind of like show my previous coach that, you know, we, we had the right idea, the right plan. And then the next year we went to do the Arnold again, me and John and John passed away during that yeah, prep. Well, so I, it's a lot a of sadness idea. in yeah. those preps, but you know, that, that first Arnold win, it meant a lot because, you know, I had these two great people who believed in me before anyone else did. Mm -hmm. I remember looking for, I was, like you said, I was the long, one of the youngest pros ever to do it at 21 years old. I had the hardest time having someone to, to want to coach me because I didn't have much money. Um, but Matt Porter, you know, believed in me enough to take me on and, and, and saw that I had potential. Man, that goes a long way. Yeah, the yeah, same yeah. with John. Um, I had just gotten a divorce. I didn't, I um, barely had enough money. I had a, I moved into a new place and I had a couch, not a couch, I had a chair and a mattress mm. and that was it. And um, he took me on for free as well during that hard time. So these are guys that like believed in me before I, I yeah, started. Yeah, saw something know, in you, man. Before I won the Arnold, before I placed second at the Olympia. And so doing the Arnold and finally winning that was a huge thing for me, you know? Yeah. Quite a story, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody sees the victory. They don't see the this, this struggle behind it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. People, like, I mean, yeah, they, but, like, at the same time, you know, we say that they don't see the struggle. People only see the highlight reel. It's because mm. no one wants to post, you know, <laughs> them living in a... The in a no, nobody's interested in, in hearing sad stories. Yeah? No one's interested, but then you also don't talk about it. Like, mm. I wasn't going around, you know... I'm not a type of person that'll, that'll complain or anything mm. like that or like say, what was me? I'm not going to post photos of me on my mattress on the floor, <laughs> you know? Maybe I should have to show people the real side of mm. things, but, you know, you don't want to do that. You yeah, don't want to yeah, take... Nobody, nobody wants to share. That's, that's for you. It's like, that builds you, man. Yeah, that yeah, builds yeah. You. Nobody... Talk about it after you get through it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you inspire. You inspire people.
How do you balance between your professional bodybuilding life and personal life? <laughs> do you define that as struggle or is it <laughs> For easy? sure, yeah. <laughs> Someone asked me that the other day. Yeah. Um, you know, I recently got married and uh, mm. she's from uh, Lebanon and uh, she also competes. Mm. And it's honestly, it's very difficult, you know. This is the first relationship. I've, I've dated other competitors, mm. but they never competed while we were together, mm. uh, strangely enough. But this is the first time I've, I've been with someone that's actually competing while we're together. And it's actually very hard where, you know, when you're in a contest prep, you get very focused on that prep. You, um, we're not necessarily mean, but we're just very like... Focused. Focused. Yeah. And then we neglect it. We, we, we tend to neglect the relationship in a sense. So it's been a struggle to figure that out, but we've been talking and figure, and especially with us both doing the Olympia, um, plan on doing Olympia this year. Which division she's, uh, she's going to? Wellness. Wellness. Yeah, she, I think she is the first Lebanese um, woman wow. um, to go. I mean, obviously Samir is the first, you know, he's from Lebanon, but uh, I think she's the first woman, uh, which is a big deal for her and her country and her family. And um, just in general, you know, coming from a Middle Eastern, you know, family, it's not normal for, mm. for women to kind of go into something like that. So um, it's a very big deal for her to kind of do well at this show. Obviously a big deal for me as well <laughs> to do well. <laughs> so um, do you think it helps having a partner that, that she, she understands the prep life? She understands the struggle. It helps to have someone who understands. Mm. It does not help to have someone who <laughs> does doing it the doing thing. the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so now you're 100%. tasting your own medicine. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. It's definitely helpful to have someone that understands mm. that's, that's competed maybe in the, and I looked at it too. I was like a lot of people, mm. even like uh, you look at Ian and Melissa, uh, you know, they're both pros, but Melissa hasn't competed in years. Mm. You look at um, Brett Wilkins and his wife Ivanka, she hasn't competed in a while. A lot of times you do have these uh, two pros that'll get together, but then one takes a back seat to mm. the other. And it's definitely very difficult to have both at the same time competing, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's a struggle, but then it's still... It's a you make it work. You, make I think work, communication yeah. is, uh, is, a, is a big thing. Like having us like talk often and like... You just have to put more effort into it, mm. I think. And be more aware of what's happening in your life, you know? Mm. Yeah. It is what it is. And I think it's... You know, this, this competitive period, it's, it's just... This is the, the pinnacle of competitive years. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's fine to let it loose a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. as long as genuinely you guys care for each other. I think for sure. Things will, will resolve at the end. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. What advices or insights do you have for uh, someone who's going into bodybuilding fresh from the start? I think um, my big thing is it's, it's funny that it comes from me, but, you know, I, I've been in the sport um, about 10 years now and I've seen a lot and I'm a big fan of like history. And um, I think being patient is, is, is an important thing. I think in today's world, like everyone's so used to getting things fast, mm. including myself. I made a joke the other day in the States, I can get an Amazon package mm. sometimes same day, usually um, next day. But here I have to wait like two, three weeks to get mm. an Amazon package. <laughs> and, and the girl was like, oh, that's quick. It doesn't take that, you know, two or three weeks is fast. I was like, that's not <laughs> fast at all. But I do think um, a lot of kids, they, they, they're so, they see, you know, myself, they see Urs mm. and Chris, we turned pro very young at mm. like 21, 22. But um, just because something doesn't happen fast doesn't mean it's not going to happen. You got guys like Breon who won his first Olympia mm. like in his late 30s, maybe, maybe 40. You got mm. guys like Sean Roden, who was the oldest Mr. Olympia ever. Yeah. You got guys like Brandon, competed for like 15 years, Big Ramis in his mid 30s. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. You can still reach whatever goal you want to reach. Just um, have to give it time. It's consistency, mm -hmm. man. Like, honestly, like, there's been certain periods where I, like, I see guys that have been in the same situation as me in the sport, and they just give up. And I've seen other guys that, 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 that keep going, they keep going, and eventually they make it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of guys, that, like Sean Carita. Mm -hmm. I would have never thought Sean Carita would ever win a, a mm -hmm. Mr. Olympia title. Yeah. I would never thought Sean Carita would win an a open show. But this guy is the pinnacle. He's the person that has the most consistency I've ever mm. seen. You He's know, the embodiment of consistency, man. Embodiment. <laughs> he just keeps going and keeps getting better. Yeah. There's there's people with better genetics than him, but they either give up mm. or they're not as mentally focused yes. as he is. 
and he beats them every single time. I think you would agree uh, the mindset or the mental aspect of the sport plays a huge part for sure. in, 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 for uh, sure. in success. Like I said, there's, I see, I've seen a lot of genetically gifted people who can't keep it together. Mm. Even like, uh, it's funny, like um, a couple years ago, Chad Nichols made a post on Facebook. He, he talked about how Chris Comier ordered Chinese food the night before the Olympia. <laughs> and I love Chris Comier. <laughs> This isn't like a secret anymore, so don't feel bad that I'm saying it. But this is a, just a, just an example of like Chris is like one of the best to ever to do it, best genetics, you know, top in the world. But like, could he have been better if he wasn't ordering Chinese food the night before the Olympia, you know? And I think you know Ronnie Coleman, he again another guy with con consistency and focus, and he was able to beat guys like Flex Willard, like the best to mm, ever compete, best best. Flex Willard. In their prime as well. In their prime, mm. Kevin LeBron, because he was just so mentally focused mm. and mentally sound. I believe Chris Pump said, uh, falls into that category as well. That man is, yeah, had a uh, focus of steel, man. For mm. sure, yeah, for yeah. sure. Chris is very, very focused and determined. Mm. He's had a lot of good people in his corner to, to help him like, and guide him to do the right things, you know, the, to be where he is, you know. Mm. You're preparing currently for the uh, Dubai Pro. How is the prep going? It's going well. I'm um, a little tired, but you know <laughs> we're making it. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, this is my first time competing outside of the mm. U.S. Well, not first time competing overseas. I competed in Canada a couple mm. times, but never this far. And um, yeah, it should be it should be a lot of fun. Um, mm. There's a lot of good com competition coming. Um, we got a couple Olympians, you know, mm. guys that train here. Valentine um, is competing. Um, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a few more that go to this gym that are competing as well. Um, even the Branch Chan, I think he placed his highest like fourth mm. at the Olympia. Yes, I think the fourth. Um, so it's a really good show. I'm really excited. Yeah. It's going to be a tough competition, yeah? For sure. For but I'm sure you're going to bring the heat, yeah? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's <laughs> funny. Like, I, I, think, I think I've been around so long. Um, I, I don't get the same respect some people do because I've, like, I've, like, I've been in, in classes since it began mm. in 2016. Um, because every single every single post I see is like, oh, this guy's gonna you know give rough run for his money, or this guy, or this guy, and um, <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, we'll see, we'll see how they do, you know. How but you it's a compliment too. Like, there's this guy from Brazil. I think he's, uh, you know, translation might be weird, but I think he's coming to do Dubai just you know to stand on stage with some of the top guys, which is you know, a, a huge compliment, you know. So uh, just yeah. to keep the listeners um, on board, if you if you won, hopefully you win, the Dubai Pro will be qualified to the Olympia. So you'll need that that one to qualify to the Olympia yeah, Classic so, Physique Division. Yeah, so yeah, I'm doing it in Dubai to qualify, but I also have to do another show. I own a, a coaching company and it's mm. growing really nicely. We have five coaches on staff. And, Iron uh, Aiden, is it? Iron, Iron Aiden, Aiden. Aiden. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Trending, and, man. And um, we're sponsoring another show, um, The Legion, in Nevada. So I have to do that two weeks after Dubai because I signed a contract where we're mm. having athletes come out. I got a men's physique co pro competing and a couple other guys. So, mm. Do you have any expectation who will uh, about the ranking of uh, men's division, classic physics division? This you, know Olympia? What's, you know, honest, oh, the Olympia. I thought, I thought, uh, the, the, I, let me... I thought you were going to talk about Dubai Pro. Okay. Um, Let's talk about Dubai Pro first. Do you have any expectation about the uh, you know, there's, ranking like I said, of there's Dubai a, Pro? There's a lot of good guys. You know, I always like to give people respect based on how they've done. Mm -hmm. Branch Chan from China. Um, he's looking really, really good. I mean, he's done the best. He's got a very classic shape. I know a lot of people are talking about the, uh, mm -hmm. the Spanish guy, Model Man. Uh, I've never competed against him before. I mm. think he's qualified once, but he couldn't make it because uh, of visa issues mm. to the Olympia. He's a very big guy, um, very big, get, mm. very big. But I, I just prefer Branch's shape a little bit more mm. uh, for classic. Obviously, you got my friends in town, um, mm. Valentin, who's also been to Olympia, and, and Wesley, Wesley, top Olympian as well. Mm. Wesley's got that old school Arnold look. Yeah, you know, I, I love his shape. I love his structure. Marvelous um, shape, man. So you're ranking guesses for the Olympia 2023. I do think Crystal. I do think Crystal. I like. I, I mean, everyone. You know, Ramon. Everyone likes a new up and coming guy. Mm -hmm. So everyone's talking about Ramon and Urs. Um, I don't think. I, I think just structurally, like, man, much Chris, respect to Ramon, but he can't. Do I, yeah, Chris to, Chris. to be honest with you, I don't know how Chris makes weight. One and two. Mm -hmm. 
Because he could win an open show. Chris could mm -hmm. legit, like, Chris, in my opinion, I might, I'm not a judge, mm -hmm. but I think Chris could beat guys like, like uh, Regan. And Regan has won mm -hmm. open shows. Guys could beat, guy, Chris could beat guys like Rafael Brando. Mm -hmm. Rafael Brando has won shows. Um, so I don't know how Chris makes weight when he can beat open mm -hmm. competitors. Um, I don't think Ramon can win an open show, and that's that's the difference. That's the difference. That's the difference. You know, I think Ramon needs some a little bit more size in his back. Mm. I think if Ramon could bring up his back, he could hold his own very well against Chris. Mm. But the issue becomes, can he put on the size he needs with the weight cap? Mm. You know, and I don't know. You know, I've it's been almost limiting. This is that's what's this limiting. This is the tough you know? part about classic physique. Like if there was no weight cap, of course, I think yeah, this, anything could happen. Anything mm. could happen with anybody. But with that weight cap, it it makes things a lot harder. So Chris um, first, Ramon second. I think Ramon could probably stay in second. Um, Erz, maybe. I think I'll be back in the top five this year. You'll be first, man. Come um, on. Come on. I think I 100% <laughs> think I could be first, but I do think I need... They, they added this weight mm -hmm. increase seven weeks out from the show, and I'm like, well, I can't really... Yeah, it ruins the whole planning part. Yeah, and even my... Old, so the, another issue, they did two things. They, they gave us an increase in weight, and they told us they're gonna give us um, set heights because oh, okay. last Olympia, an issue I had was they heighted me shorter than the past four shows I've done, the past two Arnold's, the past two Olympias. So I showed up thinking my cutoff was 180, because that's been the case the past four shows I've done, and it was 175. So um, me thinking this time around I had to be 175, when actuality, if they go, if it, if the rules are, you know, what they are, I can weigh 187. That's a big, that's a big <laughs> I jump, can't, man. I can't, I can't gain can't. 12 pounds in seven weeks mm -hmm. in a diet, in a diet, you know? So that's why I'm, I'm realistic with myself. I, I think anything is possible, but I, I do, I'm not going to say I'm going to gain 12 pounds in two months, you know, before a show. Yeah. One thing for sure, man, you're going to bring a killer pose. For sure. Yeah. I definitely think I'm improved as well. You know, and I, the cool thing is, like, I still got a lot more room. I'm still in my 20s. Apparently, people think I'm, like, 35. <laughs> man, he's young, man. You know, it's just because I started, I started, you, you know, said. I turned pro at 21. I started 19. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you still have your life, man. So I still got a little bit of time, you, you know. Time, I'm not, you like, past the, down the hill yet, you know. Um, yeah, you're going to yeah, do yeah. great. I have, I have big faith that you're going to do great. You have the mm -hmm. mindset. And you have the g genetics, man, and you have that uh, marvelous uh, posing routine to, thank, to back it thank up, you, man. Thank you. Best of luck to you. Yes. Do you think having a strong social media following impacts your success as a bodybuilder? No. Um, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, Mike the Badass just beat me at the Olympia. I got like way more followers than Mike does. Mm -hmm. You know, I, people want to. People love to find excuses for every mm -hmm. single thing just so they don't have to take accountability mm. on not being the working best they properly. could be or working, you know? And doing the work. I'm always to the belief that, you know, you have your own fate in your hands and whatever um, happens in life uh, is because of you in some type in some type of way, form or whatever. Mm. Um, but um, I think my career is a huge indicator of like, it doesn't matter like you're following anything. I went from, I went from ninth place and taking a year off from competing to second in the world, you know, and then and then the fall, you know, two years later, I went from second place to sixth place, just mm -hmm. like that, you know. I let you know, at least that's in my mind. I let you know that that stuff doesn't matter. I mean, even Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman went from, I think it was ninth to Mr. Olympia, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, true. Um, yeah, went yeah. from there to taking over the place. If you're the best. You're the best, you know. No one can, no one can take that from you. No one can hold that away from you. I think bottom line is it, it boils down to just putting on the work. Yeah. Putting on the work, staying consistency, mm -hmm. and things will happen if you, if you. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I think it does matter, of course. Winning, winning <laughs> <Yeah>. competition <laughs> yeah, yeah, does sure. matter. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but again, I think uh, it's it's how you capitalize on your uh, competitive. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, like for sure. uh, uh, profile. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think How so. do you believe uh, bodybuilders can can earn out of this uh, professional bodybuilding? Because the 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 prize money itself, it's not like uh, nah. something to aim for. The prize money is a bonus, like, mm. but like it's not. It shouldn't be your like sole income or your mm. your main income. It's something you you win and then you you put away and invest it or something mm. like that. 
Um, honestly, you know, sometimes there was good things back in the day, like where the good thing back in the day was as a pro bodybuilder, you didn't have to focus on anything. You showed up for photo shoots, everything was planned out, you didn't have to think about it, and you got six figures worth of money, you got hundreds of thousands of dollars for it. Nowadays, a lot more people can make money, but it's a lot more on the person, you know? Mm. Which is good and bad, you know? Mm. Um, I think nowadays bodybuilders have to be a lot more active online. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's a whole job, like, <laughs> I joke around, like, being a bodybuilder isn't just about lifting weights anymore. Mm. You have to, like, especially, like, it's, it, I'm getting all off subject, but, like, it's okay. in, the, in other countries, like, being here, being in Brazil, being in Korea, there's a lot some more support from like businesses and 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 the country itself. Like, I'm in the states. I would never meet an Uber driver that knows anything mm -hmm. about bodybuilding, or I would never walk out a hotel and like have people know I'm doing a Dubai, Dubai Pro. Here is really cool that I have that type of support, but in the states, um, you don't get that. So like, I had to learn how to be a videographer. I had to learn how to you know take pictures of myself. I had to learn how to speak on social media yeah. and stuff. You have to become you know, a content creator. You have to, so. Yeah, it really is. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, it's funny. Like, when people ask me what I do, sometimes I'll say bodybuilder. Sometimes I'll say influencer, you know, mm. because, like, the like majority of the money comes from social media, actually, mm. you know. Like you said, bodybuilding is a way to access everybody. It's a way to open that door. But just being a big guy in the gym isn't enough to make you money anymore. And, and you see that with a lot of bodybuilders online. You see... Guys, they'll have a big following, but you'll have this skinny kid mm -hmm. with like two, three million followers, and then this this top five Olympian with like a hundred thousand. <laughs> you yeah. know, so it's it's a lot. It is yeah. a lot more work on body. I believe it's it's uh, it's a must now to have it. You know, it it, it applies. It's the same uh, for every other. Now, social media is like uh, a standard. Uh, say, it's a cornerstone. It is each profession. Mm -hmm. I'm a dentist as a profession. Okay. Uh, even in that now, it's like just part of your CV. You have to have a, a social media following. It okay. is. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, every single. Um, you see doctors. You see dentists. Yeah, you see yeah. Plastic Are you surgeons. In social media. That's in the in the interview itself. Mm -hmm. I'm a good dentist. Do you have an Instagram account? <laughs> well, <laughs> it is hired. crazy because especially like the, the like um, the young young kids now. They search TikTok instead mm. of Google. <laughs> yeah, true, for like the information. True. Like um, a friend of mine, like when she's looking up um, plastic surgeons or like beauty scare wow. like people in uh, in her area, she'll look on TikTok. Mm. You know, so it's it's very important. You know, mm, it is. It is. What can your followers and fans look forward uh, for your future plans? Future plans. Obviously, now I'm leaning a lot more posing videos. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of posing shows coming up. It's an unfair advantage. Uh, you have that advantage in posing. So I think, yeah, you should capitalize on that. <laughs> so a lot of that, um, I'll be in, um, I travel more than most pros. The only person that travels more than me now is probably Urs. But I've done tours all over Europe. Um, I'm going to Asia this, this, um, this winter. Mm. I'm going to be in Korea. Uh, Japan yeah. and Hong Kong. The bodybuilding scene is booming there in, in a massive yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. I'm you really have some excited. Some killer athletes there. You know, yeah. um, eventually Lebanon. Whenever, um, whenever I can make it out there as well to see uh, the Weiss family and um, meet the people, you know, her, her, of her country. But, um, but it's yeah, a very nice yeah. country, Lebanon. You will love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. a very nice country. She said it's Food very. I've seen photos. There. It's very beautiful. Yeah. It's very a beautiful, beautiful country. Before we sign off, uh, Terrence Ruffin, is there any uh, thoughts, final thoughts, words of wisdoms you would like to leave our listeners? Well, first, you know, shout out to uh, Rise for helping me get here. Rise Supplements, mm. you guys have them here. Mm. Um, there's some new products dropping. Um, mm. Godzilla, if you guys know Noel Duzel, mm. um, his signature line is dropping some new flavors. There, yeah, right here. That's the one. <laughs> we got two new flavors <laughs> dropping new flavor. soon. Um, and, more uh, than these, other flavors? Yeah, 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 two new flavors coming soon. Nice. They, they told me I can't say what they are, but <laughs> all right, all right. they're coming out soon. Um, we got a new protein flavor, blueberry muffin, mm. which is pretty good. I've had that. Actual real blueberries inside of it, which is nice. really, really nice. And um, a very 
like high quality creatine there's mm. nothing else on the on the market it's one of the top top brand uh supplement brands can. yeah i really like the way they shout do out things. to rice support uh, the, the sponsor of this episode rice <laughs> supplements <laughs> yes what yeah. what supplements do you take during uh contest prep or off season i keep it pretty simple and like you know i uh protein um in the off season i do non-stem pre-workout so i don't mm. think you guys have that here the but blackout um, the, uh, they have the blackout uh, pump Pump Daddy, that's what they normally have, which is Pump zero. Daddy, yeah, yeah. I, I got that recently. But during prep, when I start to get tired, I'll start to do stuff like this mm. because it, it works a lot better. Once mm. you, you don't have all those stimulants and then you add them in, mm. you actually you actually feel it. You Your know? body is sensitive to it, so you keep up this yeah, 10 pre-workout yeah. until the end of the prep mm -hmm. when the mm -hmm. carbs are bleating and the And brain I think it helps you burn a little off. bit of fat too, you know, like... Because now your, 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 your core temperatures, um, your mm -hmm. heart rate's higher, your temperature's hotter, so you, it's a little bit easier to get leaner. Yeah, it does, um, it does. And like when I used to take pre-workouts all year round and I would add in more, I would still be tired, but my heart would be like, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, now, misses, it misses with you when you have that much caffeine. Yeah, and but you lose now the tolerance. when I take a break and I use it, I actually feel like energy. I don't mm. feel like I'm having a heart attack. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so um, those are the main things I take. Um, to be honest, I you know, they got creatine, I'll take that, glutamine, but the two main things, the most important is obviously the protein, and then when I need it, the, the pre-workout. Mm. I keep it, it simple. simple. Yeah. Simple guy. Mm -hmm. Simple works. As, it, as long as it works, yeah. keep it simple. Yeah. yeah. Terrence, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank Looking you. Looking forward to having you. you again, hopefully after you win the Pro, the yes, Pro. Yes, yes. We'll have a party. Yeah, of course. What's the, what's, the, what's the food here? What's the best food in uh, Dubai? Best food? I'll, I'll let Samah answer that because he's, he's a local here. He will, he, will, he will guide you to the best okay, okay. food in, the, in, the, uh, in Dubai, inshallah. I like it. Just I enjoy like it. it. Thank you, Raf. Thank Hope you. Hope you do great in the competition. And we'll see you soon, brother. Yes. Bye -bye.